Hi all, I have another fascinating game to show you with the modern defense. Here we're testing it with the top engines in the world, Stockfish 11 versus Leela ID 62329. This is a fast and furious time control, one minute with one second increments. So the opening book given to both is to test a Tiger Hill per person's uh, move in the Austrian attack. So E4 G6, the modern defense, D4 Bishop G7, Knight C3 D6, the dreaded Austrian attack, one of the most aggressive ways of handling the modern defense, but we have this innovative a6. So what can Stockfish do with the white pieces in this game? We see knight f3, b5, bishop d3, bishop b7, white castles, knight d7. Now Stockfish 11 commits to e5 here. There is a slight weakening of the f5 square as a slight downside. Knight h6 to be able to slip into that square sometimes. Queen e2. Black castles. Not worried here about e6. That's mostly harmless and actually extends the scope of the bishop. We have a4 instead trying to hit this pawn chain hard. D takes e5. This is a very interesting decision here. If b4, then knight e4. And white has ripped open some light squares here, especially the c4 square. After c5, for example, this is quite favorable for white. White's getting a really nice advantage. It's quite uh, favorable for white indeed. So we see after d takes e5 here, the move d takes e5 from Stockfish 11. This keeps the bishop hemmed in. It does keep a pawn on f4. You might ask, what about f takes e5? Well, in this case, this pawn can be targeted with c5, interestingly, so counterattacking the center. And for example, d takes, knight takes, a takes. There's a forcing sequence here, which is quite fascinating. After a takes, uh, there's a problem with e5. After bishop takes f3, it's a very long forcing sequence, but basically a key move is rook a5 to hit e5. And also in this line, if g takes, then rook a5 immediately is a key move. So quite often, uh, black's tactics revolve around the e5 square in this game. Quite a lot of the questions I, I wanted to ask about side variations involve hitting uh, the center hard. So d takes e5. Uh, means at least c5 is not available to hit d4. We see though the downside of this is the c5 square and Leela uses that knight c5 rook d1. If a takes b5 here then grabbing this knight square bishop is quite okay for black. This position with this weakened diagonal means rook d8 is possible. Uh, for example here then queen a5 and knight a5 f5 is quite comfortable for black. As soon as white relinquishes that light square bishop, the f5 square becomes uh, very useful for black. If we look at this again, instead of knight c3 in this position, knight takes c7, there's rook, sorry, there's queen b8, and this is tactically failing for white. That is a loose piece on b5. So if we go back here, so a takes, although tempting, doesn't seem to do too much damage to black. So rook d1. Queen c8, getting out of the way of that rook. A takes, knight takes here. So this does mean the f5 square is more useful for black. Rook takes, a takes. Leela is sacrificing material here. Let's look at the pawn situation after knight takes b5. 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Pawn down. Queen a6. This pawn is immune because of queen b6 check. So if taking queen b6 check picks up that knight. Uh, so here rook a3 was played. Also you might consider, well hold on, what about this c4? This question, it really does revolve around e5, a lot of black's ideas. f6 is a good move here it seems. For example, bishop takes f3 which also weakens e5. Queen e6 which puts pressure on e5. You'll notice a theme here emerging that uh, basically black gets counterplay based on e5, yeah, taking out black should be um, okay, just about. So uh, we have rook a3 though being played, 
Bishop takes f3 here. This is very, very interesting. Saddling white with doubled pawns. Uh, G takes. Yes, if rook takes, then just taking the queen material up. So doubling the pawns. Otherwise, the knight will drop on queen takes. So queen b7. Rook a7. So this is another pawn sack. Is there enough to show for this? Uh, so they're double pawns, though. So even though Leela's down to four pawns, and white has six. These are double pawns, and the f5 square seems very nice. Knight f5. It is quite a delicious positional knight, but is it enough? Rook d7. It's an ideal blockading knight against double pawns. Nimzovich would be proud, I believe. He's talked about uh, the best blockader is the knight, especially in front of double pawns. So yes, uh, Nimzovichian double pawn sacrifice here. Queen b6 check. King h1 and rook a8 with the big threat of a nice pin there with rook a1. So there looks to be a lot of compensation now. Rook d1. If bishop d2, just to show this, rook a1 check. And this nasty pin is celebrated with queen e3 here. And yeah, white will be losing uh, material because there's a key move rook d1 here hitting that rook there, protecting knight just in time with that counter attack. And this position is uh, just material up for black. So we have rook d1 being played. Rook a1, knight c3, h5. And is there going to be a form pawn, you might ask, if this pawn really gets here? Uh, this could be a tricky pawn, couldn't it? b3, we have bishop h6, knight d5, queen b7. Queen d3, h4, and you might ask, well, hold on, why not h3 here? It is actually possible. White played b4 in this position. h3 seems plausible, and this is a very interesting question. And it still revolves around, you know, some of these answers revolve around blowing up the white center. For example, king g7, this position, there might be the potential for an exchange sack to, to just take apart white center. So maybe this is the kind of thing Stockfish was aware of in not committing to h3, which of course weakens g3 in principle as well. So b4 seems quite logical. But this form pawn, is it quite dangerous here or not? b5, we have bishop f8, which frees up things, you know, potentially. Protecting e7, uh, rook e1, knight h4, rook g1. E6. Uh, here, just to show the dangers, uh, if, for example, the casual rook b1, f5, and this is horrible for black. Uh, for example, this position, there's a persistent pressure on the king side. It's pretty nasty stuff. Uh, black's going to be in big trouble on that g file and is crumbling. So, black has to be uh, very, very careful here. Let's go back. So rook g1, this move e6 is a good safety precaution move. Uh, we have knight f6 check, king g7, knight e4. Uh, yeah, there's a problem with f3. There's no point playing this check because uh, then f3 is going to drop and that's horrible on this diagonal. So knight e4 protecting f3 and it looks like a nice central knight there for a moment. Bishop e7, queen b3, queen b6 c4, knight f5, queen b2. We have rook a4, queen c2, rook a1, knight e6, queen c5, knight e4. Uh, if taking on f5 here, e takes, this is not possible, queen takes, because of rook takes c1, unpinning that pawn, potentially. So there's no point doing that. Uh, so here we see knight e4, Queen a7, knight d6, queen a8. This is a very, very nice pressure now on f3. And now white's really in getting in trouble, deep waters after queen c3. The fish is getting into too deep <laughs> of waters. Okay, so queen c3. If queen f2, can you see what black can do in this position, which is quite crushing? If I can give you five seconds to pause the video, black to play here based on that form pawn. Okay, you could play rook a2, trying to deflect the queen away from f3. So, for example, here, uh, bishop takes, 
and knight d4 is pretty devastating actually. Uh, this this kind of thing is going to be winning the queen. The queen's also supporting this, so pitting the queen. That's a nice line, but uh, yeah, so it, it can get pretty nasty there. And if taking then the form pawn uh, triumphs, it's actually uh, you know winning the rook and horrible things after that. So. Let's go to Queen C3. We have Knight D4 being played. Fantastic move, Knight D4, trying to deflect the Queen from F3. Again, so B6, Knight E2, forking Queen and Rook. B7, Queen A7, threatening then Queen takes G1, checkmate. Queen E3. So Black has actually won the exchange here, and. Yes, even though this is an advanced pawn, it's snapped off. It's a bit of a liability, yes. And now this end game, a pawn down only now, but the exchange up, and now just the exchange up is fairly straightforward to convert. Let's have a look at the rest of the game just briefly. So improving the position. White is unable to set up any kind of fortress here. In fact, just flings away the pawn here at this point and moves 67. Yes, it's going downhill. And we have slow consolidation. But here, actually, it was adjudicated as a win for black. It's uh, getting easier to win this. But uh, both sides thought it was quite quite winning now to a certain threshold. Okay, so uh, Leela played that uh, game in summary quite interestingly, uh, as you might expect, uh, a kind of positional pawn sacrifice to get a knight on f5, getting a form pawn later. There was huge compensation there. Getting the queen to a8 put pressure points on f3 and also supported rook a1 in some key variations. Uh, if white had played h3, then maybe there was potential for an exchange sack to blow up the white center. So some positional themes there emerge in the Austrian attack. You know, when e5 is played, that f5 square can become quite important to black. And maybe, you know, a pawn, uh, a pawn sacrifice on the queen side might be justified sometimes, as this example game shows. So I hope you got something out of it. And if you want to check out a free short and sweet course on the modern defense, Check out Kings Russia TV slash modern. Okay. Thanks very much.